the Renaissance was a period defined by art, so it's kind of hard to, to look at every single piece of art from the Renaissance. But I did want to show you some highlights, some different sort of must-know artists and pieces of art, um, as well as techniques to sort of, sort of show you what the art of the Renaissance looked like uh, and what it tells us about the time period. Um, one new um, technique you saw in the Renaissance was the use of foreshortening. Um, one of the key things that Renaissance artists were trying to do was to make their paintings look realistic, uh, to look like you're actually there. Uh, one way to do that was to paint the uh, paint things in a way that, if you were to look at it, you know, um, just on its its surface, it looks maybe a little unusual um, how short the body sort of appears. But this also makes it look deeper uh, in this particular portrait um, that has Jesus' body here. Um, because of the way the, the body is sort of shortened, it actually makes it look like it's laying back, um, that it's deeper. Um, another key use was, uh, was linear perspective. Um, this is something you know, a lot of artists nowadays learn, um, probably even did this as a kid, um, in, your, in your middle school or elementary art classes. But the idea that there's a vanishing point, and all lines on the vanishing point uh, meet and sort of disappear back there. Now, the further you go back, the smaller the figures get. And this seems kind of elementary to us today. Um, but this technique was really um, revived and perfected by a lot of artists during this time. This is from an earlier time. And uh, you'll see a lot of early linear perspectives like this where they actually use sort of pavers or um, architecture to give you a, a single point to really focus on. There's a couple painting techniques to be aware of as well. Um, one is called sfumato. Uh, sfumato is the blending of colors. And you can see this on um, the Mona Lisa here by Leonardo da Vinci. Um, there's not really like a defined border. You know, think about if you were to say, see a cartoon or, or those kind of drawings. You know, there's a very firm defined border on where one thing is and another thing begins. But on this painting, they all sort of slowly blend into shadow. Um, and that's, the, that's this technique called sfumato. Another is called chiaroscuro. Uh, chiaroscuro is Italian for light and shadow. And essentially it's, it's trying to realistically de depict um, the play of, of light and shadow on objects. Uh, so in this picture, this is from a, uh, a nativity scene. So you've got baby Jesus here. And um, in this scene, he's really a source of light. And you can see the light reflected on Mary and on these angels, and it's done in such a way that, you know, if you actually had a candle here or something, that's about what it would look like in real life. Um, so there's just a few techniques that artists use to try and make their paintings look more realistic. Um, I'm going to kind of give you a run through of a few important and significant artists to remember. Uh, one early sculptor in Italy was Donatello. Um, he was really inspired by the classics. Um, he wanted to make uh, statues look like they might have come from ancient Greece or Rome. Uh, he worked in bronze, as you see here, as well as marble. Um, two of his, couple more of his famous sculptures. One is the statue of David. Um, this is a statue of uh, King David um, from the Bible, because uh, most you know, art in the Renaissance was religiously inspired. Uh, and you've got David here, and it's sort of an unusual portrayal in that. For one, he's nude. Uh, this is the first freestanding nude sculpture sin in Western Europe since uh, ancient Rome. So it was a pretty significant sculpture at the time. Uh, he's also depicted David as quite young. Um, he's got this sort of jaunty helmet or hat on. Uh, and you can tell this is after his fight with Goliath because there's Goliath's head on the floor here. Um, and then for a very different piece of art, here's his statue of St. John the Evangelist done in marble. Um, you know, has this sort of geometric triangular pose um, and you can really see the realism in the, the folds of the cloak here. Uh, another famous sculptor and uh, also sort of all-around Renaissance man was uh, Michelangelo Buonarroti, usually just called Michelangelo. Um, he was best known and wanted to be best known as a sculptor. Um, you can see one of his earlier works here, the Madonna of the Stairs, done in marble in this bas relief. Um, but he was also very inspired by the uh, classical Greek and Roman periods. Um, one of his most famous ones that he completed, actually when he was quite young, is La Pieta. Um, 
This depicts Mary holding the body of Jesus um, after his crucifixion. Um, and this one was, uh, was really well received in, uh, in Florence where it was made at the time. Um, and again, it sort of has that geometric um, balanced figure that's characteristic of a lot of early Renaissance art. Um, but also there's a lot of realism and it also carries, you know, emotion, which uh, Michelangelo is considered one of the earlier mannerists and mannerism is a is sort of a late Renaissance style that that did try to inspire emotional reactions. Uh, now Michelangelo was also a painter. Um, he didn't consider painting a very high art and he didn't really actually enjoy painting, but he was pretty good at it. So good that when Pope Julius II was rebuilding uh, St. Peter's Basilica, um, and really the building the entirety of Rome. Um, he hired Michelangelo to do the paintings in the Sistine Chapel. Um, and by hired, I mean he actually forced. Um, he, he still paid him, but, um, you know, the when you go to, if you ever go to Italy and you look at the Sistine Chapel, each one of these paintings here um, was, was done by Michelangelo and his students. Uh, just a few of the more famous parts. Here's God creating Adam, um, for example, and, there's Adam and Eve and um, the, the tree here in the Garden of Eden. Um, so there's a lot of famous religious art here. Um, the back wall of the Sistine Chapel, he also did. Um, this is called uh, the Final Judgment. And it's a pretty common religious scene that has um, Jesus uh, judging souls, either go up to heaven or down into hell. Um, but again, you can see the, the classical Greek and Roman um, inspiration here. For one thing, a lot of these figures are nude. This was really unusual and, and sort of um, scandalous to some extent um, for religious art at the time, but he's getting those ideas from uh, the depictions of, of the human body uh, and the individual that you saw, again, inspired by Greece and Rome. Uh, Jesus, for example, here is depicted almost nude um, and also beardless uh, and young. Um, so. So he's really sort of uh, challenging traditional perspectives on art at the time. Um, one of his other most famous statues is uh, David. Um, David was a popular figure for sculptors and other artists. Uh, and, and Michelangelo's David is probably the most well-known. Um, for one thing, it's a massive statue. It's over five meters tall, so uh, more than 15 feet. Um, and it's also extremely realistic. Uh, again, um, being inspired by the classical Greek and Roman artists, it's, uh, it's a freestanding nude. Um, but also, if you look at some of the details, um, you know, in the eyes and in the hair and even down to individual, individual veins here, um, he really kind of gets a sense of, uh, of, of human proportion. Uh, and this one's different from, from the other David uh, that Donatello did in that this is before Goliath. Um, here you see he's holding the sling and, and sort of getting ready to go into battle. Uh, probably other most famous Renaissance artists is Leonardo da Vinci. Uh, da Vinci was also sort of a Renaissance man, good at everything. Um, but he was different in a lot of ways from Michelangelo. Michelangelo was very um, kind of a workman. He wanted to get work done um, so he could move on to the next thing. Da Vinci was sort of obsessive over his... Um, his work, uh, his most famous painting, Mona Lisa, for example, he carried with him. Um, he always added to it. He never really kind of finished things. Um, here's one of his early paintings, Virgin of the Rocks. Again, there's this geometric balance, um, but also the use of light and color. Um, that's Fumato and the Chiaroscuro. Uh, another famous painting, one with ermine here. Again, you can see the realism that da Vinci is able to achieve. Um, his, one of his other more famous paintings is The Last Supper. This one's interesting in that, uh, you know, da Vinci kind of considered himself a, an inventor. He experimented with a lot of, uh, new kinds of techniques. And the paint he used in this, um, this piece was so bad that within 10 years, the painting was actually unrecognizable, which is why the monks in the monastery this was painted later cut a door into it, as you see here. Um, and so what you see here is a restored version. Uh, but again, things to note, the geometric balance, Jesus here in the middle is shaped like a triangle, uh, six apostles on either side, um, the linear perspective here. Uh, he was also well known for his, uh, his sketchbooks. Um, in his notebooks, he would um, you know, try to show different inventions and engineering models. Um, he would take cadavers and um, 
and dissect them so you got a sense of where each individual muscles and, and all the bones and everything went to, to make his art more realistic. Um, so it shows you the kind of work that, that he put in. Um, another famous painting, I don't know why this is cut off a little bit, um, is Rafael Sanzio. Um, San, to show you his, his one most significant work is this one, The School of Athens. This is a huge mural done for one of the Pope's apartments. And what's interesting about this one is, for one, um, it's set totally within um, the classical period. This is not a religious piece of art. It's set during the time of uh, the Athenian Golden Age. You've got Plato here on one side, Aristotle on the other, and surrounded by all these classical um, thinkers from throughout history. Um, some are uh, Greek um, or from the uh, Hellenistic period. Some are actually from the Islamic Golden Age. Um, so you can see that, that sort of um, non-Western, that classical, not non-Western, but non-contemporary influence here. Um, most of the painters at the time that we've talked about, most of the artists were men. There were a few significant female artists I want to make note of. Uh, one was Sofonisba Anguissola. Um, she was Italian, um, and she, her, she was the daughter of another artist. Um, and from a young age, she was well-trained. Uh, she painted this picture, for example, of showing her and her sisters playing chess around the age of 15. Um, so pretty good for a 15-year-old. This is her self-portrait. Um, she was so good, in fact, that later she, we don't go to her yet, um, she would become the uh, court painter for the king of France. Um, so she was sh so well known, even outside of Italy, um, and she took on a, a job that traditionally what only a man would have taken. Um, another famous female artist was Artemisia Gentilici. Um, Gentilici was also the daughter of an artist, uh, and she apprenticed to um, a few different artists, including her, her father. Um, but her paintings are well known for their strong female characters. Um, just to give you an example, one, one popular story in, um, among artists in the Renaissance was that of Judith and Holofernes. Um, in the Old Testament, Judith is this Jewish princess. Uh, she's forced to marry Holofernes, this Persian general. And then one night while he's sleeping, she cuts off his head and takes it back to, uh, to Jerusalem as a trophy. Um, this is a popular ver thing to paint because it was sort of a dramatic image and it meant you got to paint a woman, which a lot of uh, male artists wanted to do. Um, for example, here's one from an earlier Renaissance painter, Matenia. Um, you've got Judith here. She's got Holofernes' head. There's Holofernes' body and the maidservant collecting the head. Um, you can see she's kind of maybe reluctant, uh, kind of passive in this whole situation. Um, here, in comparison, is Artemisia Gentilicis. Um, she actually paints him in the act of removing uh, Holofernes' head. Uh, and a lot of her art takes what would be considered classical um, subjects, mostly religious ones, but paints it from the female perspective. Um, so she's really unique in, in that way, and one of the artists you should remember.